Do you want to pull in historical stock prices in Excel, do some quick analysis and compare them against other stocks? I'm going to show you how you can do that with Excel's stock history function. I'm going to start with NVIDIA and I can use the stock history function to specify that stock and we always want to reference the cell as opposed to hard coding it. This is going to make it a whole lot easier if we want to change tickers or add tickers, whatever the case may be. So I'm referencing that cell in A1 that has the ticker. My start date, I'm going to go back 30 days. I'm going to use the today function, which returns today's date minus 30. So it goes back 30 days. So if you want to go longer than that, obviously you can, you can adjust this. The end date is today. So the today function. Now, one thing to note when using the stock history function, even though I specified today as the endpoint, it's not going to pull in today's stock price. It's not going to pull in that until the end of the closing day. So today I'm doing this video. It is May 13th. I've only got the values going up to May the 12th because that is the last day that the stock market closed. So I'm not going to have the closing values uh, for the current day. So as the name suggests, it's pulling in history, not, not live data. But I've got that in here. Now, let's do some other calculations. Let's calculate the largest value within this range and also the smallest and even the average. So I can do all that using the stock history function. And again, I want to copy this formula as it is. So I'm referencing that same ticker symbol. And in this case, what I'm going to use is the index function because I want to return just an array. I'm going to skip the row number. I just want that second column. So this gives me a list of all the closing values and I want to calculate the largest value. To do that, I'm going to use the max function. Close this out. And now we've got the largest value being 123, which is correct right here. I can also do this for the minimum calculation. So copy this and I'm just going to change the max to a min. And now when I do that, I've got the lowest value, 96.91, which is right here on April 21st. And similarly, I can also do the average. So just change the max to an average. And that's our average price. So all that calculation is just by using the stock history function. Let's say I also want to look at the volatility. I might use something like the standard deviation. In that case, instead of max, STDEV, standard deviation. But let's put that in percentages. So I'm going to do that using the coefficient of variation. And what this formula is, is it takes the standard deviation divided by the average to turn it into a percentage. So it tells me 6% is the volatility. And this is useful when you're comparing to other stocks to, to get an idea of just how volatile, how volatile a stock is in relation to other stocks. What I can also do is pull in the volume. Let's say I want to know NVIDIA's average volume. I also want to know its current volume. And let's say relative volume. So I want to compare the current to the average. So I can use the stock history function again. So I'm going to copy this, but this time I'm going to do something slightly different in that I'm going to add some arguments here. So there's an option here for the properties. If you want to include all of them, you have date, closing value, opening, high, low, and the volume. So I just want to pull in the volume. So I'm going to hit enter number five for that first property value, and that's it. And now I've got NVIDIA's vo volume for the past 30 days. And again, let's, let's use an average here to average that up. And let's put this in terms of millions, so divided by 1 million. And so 226 million is the average over the past 30 days. Now for the current volume, I can't pull in the current day, but I can pull in the values from the previous day. And so to pull in the current volume, what I'm going to do is paste that formula again, except this time I'm going to just change these values. So instead of minus 30, I'm going to go minus one and then minus one as well. So it's only pulling in one value. And I'm going to use the index function here to specify that I just want that second row, that value 225. And again, let's divide this by a million. So 225, so the relative volume, we can take the current volume divided by the average to say 0.99. So 99%, so fairly similar, uh, fairly comparable, not a whole lot of uh, change from yesterday to its its 30 day average. Next, let's also add another ticker so we can do some comparison here. So right now I've got NVIDIA 
over here. And I want to make sure I reference that. Everything linking to that one cell. And that's the key thing. Because you don't want to be going here, going in here and changing around um, all these different formulas. They're all linking back to cell A1, which is what we want to do. So now I'm going to use another ticker. And in this case, I'm going to use Coca-Cola, which is, which is not a very volatile stock. It's a good example of... Um, um, a more stable stable stock so it'll be a good comparison especially when we look at this uh, coefficient of variation to track volatility so I'm gonna copy this formula over and this time I'm just gonna reference h1 instead of a1 so I've got coca-cola stock history now here so now what I'm gonna do is copy these copy these values and what I could actually do instead of putting a1 I could reference this value here e1 but that's the only thing I need to change is I just need to change that ticker. So if I copy this over here, right now it's going to give me an error because it's looking at B1, but I can change this to H1. Let's link this to Coca-Cola as well. And do the same thing for these ones. And a quick way to fix this, these value errors, I'm just going to do a find and replace. So find and replace, let's look at B1 and change it to H1 replace all and there we go so we've updated those and so as you can see now we've got the largest value for coca-cola we've got the smallest we've got the average standard deviation that coefficient is just one percent versus six percent for nvidia which is what you'd kind of expect because coca-cola is a much more stable uh, stock not a, not as volatile as nvidia and other tech stocks we see the average volume the current volume for both of them we could see that there was a big spike in coke's volume um uh, the, the previous day, I'm not sure what that was. It wasn't an earnings report, but that was a big, uh, big jump in terms of vol uh, in terms of volume. And so, if we wanted to, this is an easy way to now compare multiple stocks. Let's say we want to look at another popular tech stock, Palantir. Change that, and we can see it's a bit more volatile than Nvidia. We can see its range, it's high, it's low, it's average, and so we we can do a lot more analysis in terms of how it's doing versus versus volume versus it's um versus other stocks and of course we can add more tickers if you wanted to to do more of an analysis but i just wanted to show you all the different ways you can utilize the stock history function to do more than just pulling in um a list of dates and closing values or or historical prices you can put a lot more detail and do a lot more analysis with just one single formula in excel where you where you're combining multiple functions. In this case, I've got the stock history function, the index function, and the minute function. So you can do a whole lot in just one formula to make your analysis uh, a lot cleaner and compact as opposed to building out a huge spreadsheet to do this. So that's a wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.